Hello and welcome to the Rhino Creativity course. My name is Nate and this is the first video out of four where we will learn unique ways to model to enhance your design process. Super excited about this course and I think you're going to enjoy it a lot. I recommend that you check out the first video where I introduce the purpose and order in which this course is crafted. The first technique is a push-pull modeling method. This is very similar to how you would use SketchUp and it's really good for doing basic modeling masses and conceptual design and if you want to get really into it if you really like using this you can get into more intricate details this favors more of these bigger moves and conceptual design masses and something that you could use early in the design process so let's go through how i would go about this type of modeling so first off i'm actually going to start with the box tool here and we can even, uh, even though this is early design concept, we can get specific about the uh, design dimensions to give us an idea of scale. Okay, so then we'll do 20 feet. Okay, so we have a 50 by 100. And then let's just do a control, control C, control V. I click, drag. And then please take note of uh, all the just various options we have in there. These are just my defaults at the, the moment. So the first thing to know about this push-pull method of modeling is it's typically you're working in the perspective view. In other of these methods, we're going to be using the four, the, the four grid more often. But this one, you're primarily looking in perspective view. Another foundational element to using this correctly is using the gumball function. So let's get into uh, just how the gumball works a little bit. So when you select an object, this gumball comes up. And you can do a lot of things with this gumball that is just super awesome. And one of those things is you can move where this gumball is being placed. Right now it is in the middle of the geometry and you can actually go control and you can move where you want the 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 gumball to reference now when i do a rotate it's going to rotate off that point another thing to keep in mind is you can also scale which is can be really helpful just to do some kind of quick preliminary sizing and scaling just to kind of check that out you can scale in this direction scale in that direction you can use these scale functions which is great really easy to kind of quickly just scale things make things bigger smaller skinnier so rotate them uh, and choosing the axis in which you want to rotate them if you're used to using SketchUp you use you know these push pull functionalities and you can do that within Rhino and not a lot of people are aware of this function but what you can do is you can hit control shift and you can select a face now when you do that you'll notice that before we were not seeing these uh, balls here but what you can do is you can when it goes black you're selecting the ball itself and then when you hit click drag it's going to extrude that as an additional uh, surface so let's just do that one more time control shift select I'm going to highlight the ball click drag and it's going to extrude now another thing that you can do is you can control shift click and you can just pull this and you're just pulling that geometry and you'll notice that it's not creating an extra series of lines when you control when you click drag the extrusion you're creating uh, this new additional geometry that you can then uh, reference so similar to SketchUp over time you know you could make this pretty detailed but it takes a lot of time it just starts to get a little bit messy but for these early stage uh, schematic design moves it's, uh, it's super easy to do this another thing is you can do control shift and you can actually hit the the edge here which is super cool and you can lift that up and start to create a cantilever and you can also control shift and edge turn off the gumball and go like that split face very quickly uh, you can hit split face and what this allows is you can draw a line 
and you can create that face for yourself, that additional piece and extrude it and just really start to play. Uh, so this one's super fun. It, it's so good for the, those early design concepts where you really just need to kind of just play around with something. You're not getting too bogged down into the details. Um, now we're going to go into what we're going to call the drafting method. And this is, you know, how I learned how to use Rhino. And it's, I think it's probably the most dominant sort of way to use Rhino, especially in the beginning of the design process. And it favors drafting first, drafting line work, and then extruding that into geometry. And it's, it's also very helpful for more detailed items. Um, let's just say I wanted to make a bed bed frame or something like that so you know if I did that I would probably start in this front view and in terms of the drafting tools I really like using this three points rectangle and right off the bat I can type in 0 comma 0 comma 0 press enter and that's going to orient me orient me to the 0 0 point I can hit shift and I can type in a number so let's say we're making a bed about five feet and you'll notice that okay i've locked the five feet but now i have to hit shift to snap to one of those 90 degrees and i very much recommend working as much as you can along these 90 degree angles once you get off axis things get really funky and i would recommend first modeling something using the advantages of shifting and then once you're done then you rotate it if you're noticing that it's you're having trouble sort of modeling something i would just open up a new rhino and model that object in a new space with no conflicts and then just do control c control v and copy it in your uh, your model itself all right so here we go so now we go let's say we're going to make this nine feet and then hit enter and then click and then that's that so i'm actually in the front view right now and since we're making a bed frame actually i'm going to make the mattress for the bed frame you know i didn't make it in the right area that's fine i can just rotate this control shift uh, and again i can move it i can select this point and shift and i can zero 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 and I can move it to those axes so if you're familiar with AutoCAD this is you know very much similar commands and ways of modeling just by drafting and you could do a whole project just modeling in 2d okay so again I'm gonna use that same same tool again let's make this let's say we're gonna make this two feet tall uh, and I'm going to make the posts. Uh, so I'd make this two inches. And then I'm going to control shift, control V. If I click, hold, drag, I can kind of snap that edge. And, and you know, this is where some of that uh, design would come into play. Let's say I want to make some, you know, curvy um, headboard, for instance. I could come here and let's try this uh, handle curve. I recommend that, you, you know, go through all these curves and see which, which type of uh, tool that you like. Uh, what's nice about this one is you can kind of set the axes axis points and, and once you're done you can click this and then you know this is a crazy bed here but you can always select a point and then just just delete it and you'll have less control points and you can kind of manipulate this curvy bed frame as crazy as you want it to all right, so that's gonna be our headboard here, and then I would draw a curve and hit enter. So you'll notice, unlike SketchUp here, is that the curves are not sticky. And so 
I have to select both and then hit join. Now we're going to extrude that geometry. I'm going to type in extrude curve, extrude curve. And uh, what's important to note here is there's a lot of options and you want to make sure typically you want it to be solid. And there's all these options, the direction that you want to go. Sometimes you have to specify that. So always pay attention to you know, those options. Two inches. A couple things to know is the curve still exists and it's not attached to the surface. It has nothing to do. It's two separate objects. And then you have this curved piece. And now let's say we never, we never join these curves. Let's say I grab these two and I hit extrude. You'll notice that I have two separate surfaces here. Now, if I wanted to, I can I cap these? I cannot cap them. I cannot make them a solid object. If you select a curve, it will tell you type close curved. And if I select this curve, it will say open curve. Now, if you have an open curve, uh, as you can see, sometimes, yes, it will extrude it solid, but sometimes it won't. And that's important to pay attention to. And a lot of the times you'll have conflicts with things not extruding correctly. Another thing, we have open extrusion. So this is good to know the terminology. We have open extrusion. I'm going to select both and I'm going to hit join. Now what we have is an open poly surface. Open poly surface is what it sounds like. Poly, multiple surface. It's multiple surfaces versus just an open extrusion or a surface. That would just be a surface. So now that we have this poly surface, I can hit cap and I have a solid object. Now we're going to try something out. Let's say I'm modeling something and I am not what we call planar. So you'll notice in this top view that I have modeled a curve and I've snapped to something that's not in uh, the correct plane. And now when I try to extrude this surface, it's going to want to default to curving up or down, not lengthwise extrude it the other direction, uh, you would have uh, conflicts here. So let's say I did try to curve it in this direction. You can do that with this and you can do it with that. That's, you know, it's fine. It works to know that this is not a, you know, a planar surface that I'm working with. And so that can cause conflicts when, for instance, Let's say I wanted to sort of close this out. Let's say I wanted to make this whole thing do join. So now we have a closed curve. So I can extrude that closed curve, right? Yes, you can, but weird things are potentially going to happen. And you'll notice that now this cannot be a solid surface. You can hit Let's see, you can hit project to C plane. No objects. Yes. And then that's going to snap it to the C plane and make it planar. Uh, and now um, let's say we offset this. Now we're going to, or just extrude it as a, let's just extrude it as a surface. Extrude it as a surface. You're not going to have self intersecting uh, faces. It just helps keep the geometry a little bit cleaner. You can go offset. So you'll notice too that you do have to kind of work in these closed curves. Like I now need to go back here and kind of collect, select these lines, select these lines and come up to here, select these lines, join. And now I'm going to extrude. So now it's a closed curve, extrude it and you get this closed geometry. But now let's say we have this closed curve and we make it non-coplanar, okay? Extrude it and you'll notice that it's, it's, it's open, it's not solid. Do it, can I hit cap? Nope, 
doesn't want to. Uh, the way that you can get around this, uh, which takes a little bit of time, is you can do dupe edge, dupe edge, if you didn't want to cap this. You can select the edges, hit OK, and you can hit patch, okay? And that will help close it, and there's various settings that will get that tighter and tighter. So let's do like 10. And that will get it a little bit tighter. And then what you can do is you can take the geometry and hit join. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's a pain, sometimes it's not. So there are ways to work with the geometry if it's not coplanar, but it's just important to remember that, yes, it's going to be start to get messy, and yes, it's going to get harder to adjust and edit later on if you're not working in coplanar curves, and you can use the project to see plane to make it coplanar. The final one is similar to this sort of method of drafting first and then extruding, uh, but, but it is a little bit different. And this is really favors more free flowing and dynamic shapes. And this method capitalizes on using curves as references. And you can use curves as references in a number of ways. And so the first way that we're going to use or curves as references, that's sort of the technique, this third technique of modeling, is uh, the loft function. So if you had three curves here, and of course, I mean, you can use more than three, but let's say we just have these, you know, five, five random curves. Now, the good thing is you don't, they don't have to be like these are all open and yes it's beneficial if they are coplanar I mean I don't think they necessarily have to but again it's going to simplify it so I can select these curves and I can hit loft and you'll notice with the uh, loft function uh, you can do a lot here which is really cool and when we get into the the last video which is sort of cert all things surfaces we'll get into all the nuances here but just for now kind of check out these various ways that you can use it and uh, you can always do solid point on and you can kind of adjust that curve or you can do uh, points on and you can get uh, the points on the surface and edit those pretty cool okay so that is the law function now something to know about the law function is Let's try to uh, do things incorrectly. So always the to always to tutorials usually show you, you know, without things going wrong, let's make some things go wrong. So let's say I try to loft this. What did it say? All right, let's join them. No, cancel. So we're gonna join, join. So we have these now we have closed curves and let's try to loft them okay so you'll notice now it is it still lofts them good news and you'll notice it's not perfectly and you can adjust both the direction here and the amount of accuracy so you know i can go you know 50 or something and then it's going to be tighter to those curve references. And later on, sneak preview, there's a way to manipulate the curves and manipulate by and that manipulates the surface. But we'll get into that on the last video. Okay, so that is uh, this loft function. Now again, let's break let's break the loft. Let's make it not work for us. Just to show you, you know, sort of the limitations of the tool, so you don't get frustrated with doing something and you're like why isn't this working okay this still seems to work with coplanars now where the loft does start to break down is let's say we moved one of these curves it doesn't always know the order in which to loft so now let's try to loft this so it can get confused and doesn't know you know sort of which point to loft first. Another thing to know is that with this reference geometry, if you have a closed curve here, if I hit loft, it can't do that. 
because uh, this is just one closed curve. So it needs multiple curves of those references. If you want to turn this into a plane, you could type in planar surface, planar surface, and you get a planar surface. But let's say you had a non-planar curve and I type in planar surface, nothing happens, it doesn't work. But what I can do is type in patch and preview, voila, and I get a, a dynamic surface here. Okay, so the last way that we're gonna show how to do using curves as references is the pump pipe functionality. This could be used for some funky handrail. Uh, maybe you're doing mullions. You can do custom shaped, shaped mullions, all that kind of stuff. But you can type in pipe and uh, it gives you two diameters you can work with. And that way you can make a pipe or this kind of, you know, maybe this is a tower. I don't know. And you have, you know, maybe you're doing some general, you know, just like a big, like spiral tower or something. And this is here design. Okay, so this second way is really cool. Really like this. So this is using curves as a reference, uh, using this sweep to command. So you know, let's say you're kind of making some some crazy kind of tower thing. I have two curves, and then I have a base curve, and then on the top, I'm gonna go to the top view. And let's say it's even more dramatic here. And I do what I do want to do is I do want to drag that up. So this is awesome. Okay, so ch check this out. All right, so what we have here is in 2D view, we have these four curves, separate curves. They're not closed curves. They're all separate curves. We've drafted the two curves uh, in this top view plane, and then we've drafted these two uh, in the front view. So, you know, how would you make this into a surface? And there's, there's a couple ways to do it. You could patch it. Let's see how, what that comes out with. Preview, a patch, and you get sort of like a patched surface, and that, that's fine. Actually works pretty well. But another way that you can do this is using the sweep two and uh, select first rail, first rail, select second rail, select sweep shape one, select shape two. And there's just a lot of functionality you can do with that. And then you get this surface along here that you could just really, I mean, you can create a lot of really cool shapes this way. All right, we're gonna get to one bonus tip with this technique. So I can, if I hit the record history, and people always ask me, why, why are you so obsessed with this record history? Don't understand. Now you will understand. So hit record history, then hit this sweep two. First rail, second rail, shape one, shape two. Okay, great. Now I can take this curve, and I'm actually editing the curve itself now, and that updates uh, the, the whole shape and how it's positioned. So that's really cool. And you can do that with the loft function too. That's just with the record history. All right, so that's it for now. In the next video, we will get into specific ways to start to put some of these concepts together and into action. So the various ways uh, that you can actually construct things using these methods uh, and go into a little bit more depth as well. Okay, so check out the next video to explore the various ways to start to leverage these types of techniques and actually constructing and building models uh, in Rhino. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope this was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Have a good day. Bye.